Welcome to Dads and Daughters, episode number eight. Uh, hope you all had a great uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Kelly and Jenna, the lovely and the babushka, we had a great time. We watched that uh, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones fight last night. And after Jerry Cooney next June, I think I'm going to take on Nate Robinson. So, Nate, me and you are going at it, buddy. Uh, I don't think I want any piece of Jake Paul. He looked pretty tough last night. So, Nate, you're my guy, man. After Cooney, coming after you, buddy. So lots of food this weekend, so we went need to burn up those calories, and we're going to focus this episode on physical and mental health. So we want to start off talking about physical fitness. Uh, started about a year ago with this F45 training, which I had heard of by a friend of mine, Mark Wolberg, Marky Mark, and his brothers. I was at a Miracle Day charity event last year for Mark's youth, Mark Wolberg Youth Foundation. We do it every year up in New York, and F45 started in Australia by founder Rob Deutsch, and uh, Mark was pushing me to take the plunge with F45 training. And at the same time, Jimmy Wahlberg, his brother, was pushing me to be Jerry Cooney's opponent for this fight night that we're now going to be doing next June, supposed to be this past June. And the big irony of it all was F45 was also slated at that same time to open a franchise right in my own very neighborhood a few weeks later. So it was all meant to be. And uh, another tie into F45, I got to say, is my trainer, Irish Mickey Ward. He was also played by Mark Wahlberg in that movie, The Fighter, uh, over 10 years, ago, uh, 10 years ago. So Mickey's now my trainer for the Cooney fight, which is pretty cool. And I want to play a little intro clip on that whole experience. It's a family affair with that 45 train. That was the Prodigy program. We're going to talk a little bit about that and introduce Barry Sineri, who's backstage and coming on now. Talk a little bit about that. And there is Barry. Hey, That's team. Where... How are you? Good. They're going to do some burpees for you. So <laughs> and 20 burpees to make up uh, for yesterday. Well, though, uh, I'll, see, I'll uh, see them soon enough, Mike. I know you will. You will. But uh, also, we want to have a, qu a quick clip. That was a Prodigy clip. There's another clip of the Wahlbergs, which I think went viral last year. And if the producers backstage can get that clip on, we'll just show a little bit about the Wahlberg tie into F45 and how we all got involved in this amazing program. Here I am with uh, Paul Wahlberg, and uh, you might know him for the Wahlbergers show. And we want to make a shout out to the F45 studio down in Wakefield, down in Raleigh, North Carolina. 200 people signed up already. We're killing it on the workouts. And what do you say about it, Paul? Just keep at it. It's hard, but it is so worth it. And the, what you get out of it is amazing. Yeah, what does Mark say? I mean, Mark is really big behind Mark, this thing. Mark, Mark lives S45, drives me crazy. <laughs> uh, I'm a little more slower paced, yeah. shall we say. But uh, it, it's a great workout, and it, and what it does for you, and spiritually and physically, is amazing. There's some great coaches. We got Barry, we got Jenna, Sarah, some really great coaches, and even get this old man in shape. So thanks for all you do at F45. You're not that old. Oh, I'm, I'm, not, why are you making I, me feel bad? All right, sorry, buddy. But I know it's tempting to go fall off your program, but you got to stay on the program, eat a little bit, and then go to the gym and burn it off. I'm 154 days dry today. The mission continues. We're going all the way to Christmas. No wine, no potato chips. Hey, Mark Wahlberg. We are here at F45 Wakefield in Raleigh, North Carolina. Worked up a big sweat today. And just, hey, I'm wearing my CIBC Miracle Day shirt. It's one of all the great charities that we did this event for, for the Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg Youth Foundation. Loved it, man. And uh, big announcement. I'm going to be fighting my man Jerry Cooney in a boxing three-round exhibition June 20th. In, Ho in Hoboken, in New Jersey, to support YCS, which is Jerry's charity. These guys are going to get me in shape so I can go nine rounds with the champ. And Jerry, yeah. Jerry you better watch out, buddy. Woo! So I'm coming at you, man. I'm still, I'm still young at heart. So June 20th, but hey, anybody that can make a donation to YCS, Jerry's charity, and also support the Mark Wahlberg Youth Foundation, let's do it. So let's have a good workout. We had, a, we crushed it today, right, everybody? Yeah. yeah. 
It's my girl, Jenna, Sarah, Barry, the coaches, and Peter. Hey, great job, man. Let's keep it going. Yeah, baby. All right, let's do it. Happy one year birthday anniversary to F forty five. You look a little up. you look a little better there, Mike. It's from yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I think Barry looks more like Mark Wahlberg than me, I'll tell you what, because I can't keep up with Mark Wahlberg and his workouts. I'm more like uh probably Paul because Paul does <laughs> a lot of burgers. So there you go. But Barry, talk a little bit about your involvement, what drove you and <clears throat> just let's back up to how you got involved as a fitness trainer. Over 15 years ago, what drove you to, to start your journey doing this uh, amazing stuff? Yeah, I've been in the fitness industry for about 20 years now, personally. Um, really, like, kind of tying it into Prodigy real quick. I was just a kid that was out of shape, overweight, wasn't really physically active. And as I got closer to, like, my college age years, I kind of got into physical fitness and just really, like, truly changed my life at that point. It's really helped me with my self-esteem and just feel better and um, when I was in college, I started just continuing to exercise regularly and just made a decision at one point in time that that's what I wanted to do as a career to help other people kind of like set themselves up long term to be physically and mentally and healthy and well long term for sure. So um, long story short, I started uh, as a, in, a, in a personal training studio, did that for probably about 15 years. And uh, one of my first clients introduced me to F45, the, the franchise, and uh, took a look at it. And I thought it was just absolutely fantastic and wanted to be involved. And so um, from there, you know, we just kind of partnered in business to open several of these here in our area to transform our community to uh, think and fill and, and live healthier to uh, just increase their quality of life. And I think really F45 really, really provides all the tools to be able to do that. You're always so great with motivation too. And I know one of the, uh, had to be around maybe Christmas or New Year's last year. You were telling your personal story with your son and yeah. just um, just yeah. really touched and I think motivated all of us to just try harder, work harder. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna share that. I think that was just a really moving experience. Yeah, it's actually been um, around this time uh, 10 years ago. We were in the process. My son had fallen ill and we were trying to, at that point in time, at the stage of the game, trying to figure out what was going going on. And uh, just before Christmas, uh, 10 years ago, he was diagnosed with medulloblastoma, which is a pediatric cancer. And, um, you know, that was something that, you know, obviously my family and I uh, didn't really think that we that was something we'd ever have to face. Um, <clears throat> you know, he battled that very hard for about a year, um, passed away just just short of his third birthday um, going on near 10 years ago. And, um, you know, that's really truly at the core of why I do what I do. Um, it's kind of a two-fold thing. I would say the first uh, phase of it is I really feel like people take their health for granted, you know, and so uh, through F45, I really want to help people kind of see the value of taking care of yourself and how it kind of puts you in, in a position to uh, truly live out your gifting um, a lot more effectively by taking care of yourself because you put into yourself, you'll be able to put much more into others. And on the prodigy front, just helping uh, kids kind of set um, that foundation for long-term healthy living and and that would just help maximize their lives as they grow and as they develop so you know what I do day in day day in and day out in the studios is is a, is a twofold I just help adults maximize their lives and just help kids help them set long-term healthy patterns so well, you're dedicated 24 <laughs> 7 and I think the consistency is what I see in the members that go I mean we've had a lot of great members in our community, as I call it. You know, we have Dawn, Amber, Corey, Jim, Megan, Carrie, Arena, all the people that come every day. If you only come one day a week, you don't get a lot out of it. <laughs> My girls, to make this a lifestyle. This isn't just going it's to a lifestyle. It is. It's a community. It and that's what I find about F45. I'm not doing this as a plug. I'm not being paid by F45. This truly has been the most amazing experience. I lost personally 45 pounds to get down in training shape for the Cooney match. I probably put about five back on during Thanksgiving, but I'll work it off this week. But it's just been amazing getting me in the best shape I've been in uh, probably since college football and just incredibly uh, grateful for what you've done in the prodigy program. I think it's really extending to my girls now and giving them some uh, good lifestyle. I enjoy spending time with uh, Kelly and Jenna for sure. They, they listen it. very well. I don't know if they listen to you that well, but they listen to nah, me. No. no I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to do 20 burpees for me later, but that's all good. No, no but yeah, boot camps. I mean, even during a pandemic, Barry, last thing I wanted to say before we 
is yeah. the amazing about F45 is during this pandemic, everything's shut down. I mean, governors across the country, even in North Carolina, you know, we had this at home workouts that you developed, you pivoted really great with getting folks at home. And we couldn't get out of our house to do the program at home in my living room, or we did boot camps. I remember sweating in 110 degree heat out there um, in Raleigh, and we all got our workouts in. We didn't miss a beat. I didn't miss anything. I know I can't speak for all the other members, but that was truly grateful to, you know, to get that program in during a, a national crisis and to make sure our health didn't suffer because really, I think immensely, the mental health of a pandemic are really unsettling, yeah. right? So getting the physical yeah. health in, keeping the routine is so key. So got to plug that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, truly like for a lot of people, like exercise is medicine, you know, I mean, it's a healthy outlet and, you know, especially with all of us these days spending a lot more time at home. Uh, there's a lot less uh, interaction with other people and uh, you have to take care of yourself, you know? And so, you know, we, we, you know, we, we pivoted as a business. We wanted to continue to provide, um, the service that we provide and just keep people health, healthy and well, both physically and mentally. And, um, you know, I, I just know like for kids, for example, a lot of these kids are like going to school at home right now. It's virtual and they need a healthy outlet. And we, we you know, we, we really felt like F45 provided us all the resources and tools to be able to continue to serve our community and give them a, a healthy outlet, both physically and mentally. And you know, we did whatever we needed to do to make sure we can bring that to them on a day to day basis for sure. And it's safe as well. You know, I think in terms of safety, nobody's gotten yeah. sick in studios, which is good. Great. Yeah. The We've had hard. zero, zero yeah. cases in three studios. We've had zero cases of COVID. So I mean, we're doing we're doing everything we, that we can to keep everybody safe and healthy through that process for sure. Well, thanks, Barry, for joining the program. I mean, this is the one year anniversary. We wanted to time it with a great like celebration and plug for Prodigy because really Prodigy is now taking this generation from me, from an old man down to my girls and they're yeah. going to So thanks for all Yeah, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, you know, training up your children in the way they should go. So like that, that, that to me is just like an overarching thing. And if we can just put these healthy lifestyle things in practice now, this is something they'll continue with for the, for the long term, and they'll reap the benefits of that. Absolutely. For sure. Well, that's great. Well, thanks, Barry. We're going to talk now about another uh, um, uh, organization called Mission B, which I've had the pleasure of being a board member for the last five years. They focus on mental health, mindfulness, meditation, and yoga. So we're going to play a quick video to talk a little bit about Corinne Winter and have some other special guests in my high school that are going to join as well that do mindfulness as well. So thanks again, Barry. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. I'll see you girls very soon. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> <Everybody>. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do that. Hi, I'm Corinne Winter the founder of Mission B. We're a nonprofit bringing mindfulness into schools. Since 2012, we've impacted over 40,000 children and trained thousands of teachers. We're so excited to have experts in the field with us today, as well as mindful educators and children, to share with you how these practices have changed their lives. Thank you for joining us. Mindfulness is important so you wouldn't be like stressed out all the time. Mindfulness is good because it helps people kind of relax instead of being worried and hyped up. You know, some people would probably be shy in the class and, you know, once mindfulness came, it would really help them to overcome it and they would be more happy about themselves. So, you know, if you have like a big birthmark on the side of your face or something, you just shy to show it out, you know, a mindfulness teacher will come over and just tell you, that's the most beautiful thing about you. So you should show it, you should be proud of yourself. And yeah, I think it really did. When I'm about to take a really big test or quiz, I like breathe constantly because I'm very nervous that if what happens if I don't do good and I get a bad grade. But I worry, but I focus when I do mindfulness, I focus on doing what I know and doing the best I can. Well, I, was, I want to introduce three special guests. Uh, the first one that's going to pop in here is Corinne Winter, who was the founder, executive director of Mission B, you know, launched it in 2013, impacted schools all over the country and helps children regulate emotions and mindfulness training and serves as an antidote to stress 
uh, violence, bullying, and addiction, and especially critical now given the uncertainty of the pandemic. Also, Corinne, I just want to make sure I introduce uh, two high school classmates of mine that have also done mindfulness in the New York City school system, so Board of Education. So Dave Paris will be joining and Ursula Coffer as well. And they're going to pop up. There's Dave. Dave was on an episode a while back talking about his recovery from COVID and some special things, but we want to focus on what Dave really has his heart and mind for, which is this. Uh, Dave has spent 25 years in the New York City Board of Education. I don't want to date you too old, Dave, but you're my age, so we can, we're all old guys. But uh, MS88 teaches literacy and dance and social emotional learning, which is really focused on life skills and critical thinking, conflict resolution, and student goal uh, coaching. So and to develop, he'll talk a little bit about this social emotional act that he's started to develop. And Ursula, about 24, 25 years as well, old like all of us, I'm kidding, but we're all young at heart. Um, but she's focused on teacher development, evaluation coach at the New York City Department of Education, District 15. And she's working on a project she'll talk a little bit about called the School for the Mindful Inquiry for grades six to 12. So welcome everybody to the show, little reunion. I haven't seen any of you guys in person in about a year. So Dave, I hope to see you Thursday at our Hornets Midwood football reunion. So we'll talk about that. <laughs> so, but Corinne, I want to talk a little bit about how you got involved in Mission B. Um, obviously, what drove you, obviously, uh, your personal story with your sister Beth, and just how you got involved in this and how children are benefiting from this program around the country. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, Mike and Kelly and Jenna for having me on the show. And hi, Ursula and David. Nice to finally meet you. Um, I'm so excited and honored to be here. So my background is I was a high school social worker for 10 years in New York. Um, I also worked in a middle school for um, the same time. Um, I also spent about four years working in the New York City foster care system as a um, clinician and a casework supervisor. So I really saw the need um, in, that, in the field for mindfulness and social and emotional learning. Um, when you're a school counselor, you can only counsel 1,200 students. So you can only counsel around 10% of those a year. Um, so then the other 90% of students aren't really getting mental health services. Um, and typically in schools, they only offer one semester of health in all four years, typically during 10th grade. And that's not really enough to cover all the things we need to learn socially and emotionally and for our health and well-being. So I started teaching mindfulness to the students that I worked with at the high school and the middle school. Um, also, right around when I started that job, I lost my sister, Beth. Um, she was 23, and um, she had just graduated from University of Rhode Island, and she was going for her first series of job interviews, and she was very anxious about that. Um, she had no training in social and emotional learning in her schooling growing up as a kid. Um, so when she was anxious, she went to her doctor and he prescribed um, an SSRI to help her manage her feeling of anxiety. And she had a very um, terrible side effect, um, which caused her to take her life a week later. Um, and we know for a fact that it was a drug that caused her to, to commit suicide because um, she was not suicidal or even depressed. Um, so that was that's kind of the fire that was lit under me um, to really move forward and push forward my program um, in the schools and really value how can we reach every child? Because as a school social worker, you typically see the students that are struggling with anxiety and depression in that moment or family issues at home. But every child needs mindfulness and every single one of us at some point in our lives is gonna face adversity. We're gonna face challenges and disappointments and stressors. And no matter who we are, we're not immune to that stress. So we all need skills that we can take with us throughout our lives to help us better face those challenges. Um, that's so great. That's, that's what inspired me, yeah, thank you. Well, that's great. Well, Dave's got a lot of fire in his belly too. You know, Dave, talk a little bit about the social emotional learning education and some things you've done, a newsletter, a podcast, even developed an app I think last year you're working on. and. I think you're also working with Ursula on what she's been doing, working on too. So I just want to hear a little bit about your involvement, personal connection to, to this amazing mindfulness uh, education. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am somewhat new to mindfulness. Um, my, I'm a nonviolent communication trainer. Um, and that's a compassionate communication where 
we see the world outside of our should and shouldn't or good or bad. Um, and we connect to our feelings and what our needs are. And when I did that training uh, four or five years ago, my classrooms transformed as kids uh, had a choice um, to take what comes up naturally in the mind and then transfer it to a way that they can connect to their own feeling needs and then think of their other uh, other people's feeling needs. And I had them practice doing um, empathy sessions with each other where they were listening to each other and guessing the other person's feelings and needs. Those skills transferred um, outside the classroom and also at home. I think my, my one of my biggest moments is when a kid said, yeah, my mom was really upset. Um, and I went up to her and said, hey, are you feeling angry because you're needing support? <laughs> and the mom said, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, I knew there that there, there's something, as, as, as much as we can spread this communication style, um, and then that led me into some mindfulness training, working with Ursula um, last year and um, introducing that this year to my students. I'm not an expert, I'm still studying it and working on it myself. And um, I could talk for a lot, but that's, yeah. Well, we hope to get you involved, uh, Dave, with Mission B. We've talked a lot about it over the last year with what Corinne is doing and Ursula. The program that you've been working on, the project, the School for Mindful Inquiry, I think given the pandemic and what we're all going through right now. I know it has remote learning um, based program as well. And talk a little bit about what that does using an inquiry based learning approach. And it's got this hybrid brick and mortar and remote learning uh, methods. Really, really incredible. Well, so thank you. So I um, started uh, teaching yoga about a year ago. I got my certification and then came the mindfulness point person for district and I wanted to see what best practices look like. So Dave, Dave opened his classroom to me, he let me interview them, I videoed his class. I was really blown away um, by the way kids were able to carry themselves, their deportment because of work. Um, so um, a few of us came up with the idea of designing a mindfulness school, which would be the first in the country. Uh, the plan is incubated in New York City. Um, hopefully in District 15, it would be a six to 12 model. This would be the first school in the country that would offer every incoming sixth and ninth grader with a mindfulness capstone course, um, I should say survey course. And um, the mindfulness practices would be also integrated in courses throughout their math, their English, their civics, sciences, and so forth. Um, we'd also be the first school in the country that would offer a bilingual uh, Spanish yoga teacher training to students who are interested. And um, the entire focus of the school, the instruction would be inquiry based. So it would be more around students solving a problem, um, using their remote learning time to interview people, gather information, uh, generate reports, present their reports. And um, the school team is a compilation of teachers, students, um, parents, uh, community members, um, local elected officials, and the kids actually designed 12 different schedules before COVID around remote learning and um, blended learning models, where they're in, either in school uh, or they're home and, and different combinations of both. So this was actually designed before COVID. The kids, every decision is ran before the kids. You know, they, they make the final decision on everything. So, um, yeah, that's really uh, where we're at. And uh, David, I look forward to working with you more. And Karen, I've heard of your work. I know you were at MS51 in District 15 and would love to work with you as well. well that's great. <laughs> that's awesome stuff. The yoga, by the way, you know, I've been, uh, the girls know very well, my yoga trainer is a guy named Diamond Dallas Page, professional wrestler, known him for about 25 years since I was a failed uh, professional wrestler kind of guy back in the day. But DDP has developed this amazing program that I've been using even uh, throughout the whole F45 training. Uh, yoga, I love it. And it's not yoga for women, but it's really yoga for tough guys as well. So trying to plug that as well. DDP, if you're listening, hey, DDP yoga, man. But uh, great stuff. So you're doing a lot of that workshops as well. And Corinne, talk a little bit about the core values that you really uh, tried to drive through and kind of how do you sustain the program, all the efforts you've done over the last seven years now, pandemic has hit us. Again, I think virtual now world is now, how do kids go go through this being at home? Yeah. Uh, adapt your model to be more in-home based where people are remote and not in the classroom where you do your workshops. 
Yeah, so um, some of the values that we actually teach the children is, is to be present. So often, you know, our mind goes, we have around 60,000 thoughts a day and 40,000 of those thoughts are the same as yesterday. So teaching them the value of the present moment, um, teaching them self-compassion, so how to be loving and kind towards ourselves. Um, we also teach them important things like empathy and um, we teach things about gratitude and altruism and really about um, taking care of ourselves and our own well-being so that we can better take care of others. Um, so Mission B, um, what we've been doing during the pandemic um, is we've been doing primarily virtual trainings. Um, we do have a district that is back fully, um, well, not fully, they're every other day in person. Um, so we are delivering services live in the classroom for that one district. Um, but what we've had to do is kind of recreate our program um, so that we are able to make the online training engaging, entertaining, fun, and effective. So a lot of the stuff that we do in the classroom is there's there's games that are involved, there's group activities. So we've been using the breakout rooms a lot. Um, we've been getting the students into either dyads or triads or groups of five for them to do some of the group work. And we've had to modify our games and find Zoom games. <laughs> um, it has not been easy to have to recreate um, a lot of the way we deliver the program, but the basic, um, mission is the same and uh, surprisingly many kids can do um, a lot of the movement i'm also a yoga teacher and so there's a lot of yoga based movement and tai chi based movement that's and, and even some dance move type of moves that are integrated into the into the classes um so we do do a lot of movement with them from home um yeah, so we've been adapting, but it hasn't been easy. Um, a lot of our, um, we did already have online training for um, students. Another thing that we did um, in April was the Mindful Teacher um, and Parent Summit. So if you go to mindfulteachersummit.com, you can see we interviewed, uh, we did like 36 or 37 interviews. We had all sort of different authors and speakers on the platform. It was really great. Um, it was 21 days, 37 speakers, and that's for uh, teachers and parents. Um, and if anybody wants a discount code, they can email me and I'll give them a, a pass for that to get onto that site. But yeah, so we found that we actually were able to reach a lot of parents um, through, that, through that as well. And coming up in the next few weeks, we have a lot of evening workshops for parents. We have professional development for teachers online. and the majority of my staff is also teaching online. So we're I hanging think they, I, I think the innovation is great, or uh, Corinne, and I think Dave, what you've done with your social emotional learning and the app, the newsletter, adapting, and uh, obviously Ursula as well with your uh, program. So what I want to do is also volunteer Kelly, you know, I think given her anxiety disorders, things that she suffered through and has, and maybe using her as a guinea pig, Corinne, maybe do some workshops involve Kelly, We'll come back in three months and we'll see we'll have another show with you guys and see how how it's impacted her i think uh, her, yeah. what do you think kelly yeah because i yeah. think a special needs population i think it can do they have a lot of valuable benefits they've been home for like nine months now so they're yeah. kind of uh, i think this is a good point uh to really come back and see so thanks for uh for giving us a good overview of absolutely and Dave, what you're doing, Ursula, what you're doing. Hope to see you guys soon and uh, in person. But in the meantime, thanks for all you did to help children. This is what the focus of the sh uh, show is on. So we talked a little bit about physical health to start the show now. Mental health, I think, is so crucial right now. So I uh, want to wrap up. And thanks for everybody for Thank joining you. And Thank you so much. great show we next week. resources, too, if you want, at missionb.org. And you go to the video section. There's free videos that all the kids can watch. MissionB.org right. under videos. And I just want to thank you, Mike, for being on the board. And thank you to my board, Monica, Iken, Mike, and everyone at Ursula and David. Thank you so much for, I'm so excited to get to connected to both of you and to hopefully work together in whatever capacity we're meant to. And thank yeah. you for, it takes a village to help all of the children in our country. They need this more than ever. So Great. thank you so much. Well, let's do the show again in three months and have a kind of recon see how much progress we've made. So thanks for being part of this. You got it. Bye-bye, everyone. Okay. Thanks. Have fun. All right. Thanks.